Today's video is about how to pose. I know for a lot of us that have curves, the idea of being in pictures is super terrifying. And a lot of us tend to not show up or to totally hide ourselves. And the truth is, as long as you understand some of the core principles of how to pose, and how to pose if you have curves, how to pose if you're thick, slim, thick, whatever the case may be, you can really take ownership of how you're showing up on camera and feel that kind of confidence because everybody deserves to have a record of their life on camera. Everybody deserves to have memories of where they've been. If your confidence is getting annihilated because you don't know how to pose, you don't know how to look good on camera, I'm going to help you today. And if we're just meeting, hi, I'm Gia Goodrich. I am a professional photographer. I'm also a creator here on YouTube, but I have spent the last 15 years photographing thousands of human beings, everything from Adidas campaigns to magazine covers to dancers. I have covered the gamut, including a lot of wonderful, everyday, non-model people who want to look and feel their best. Here's the superpower in that. I have spent hundreds of hours helping people show up in front of the camera. I've heard what they're concerned about. I've heard what they want to improve, what they want to look different, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to try to condense all of that knowledge to help you today get some core ideas that will help you with posing. First, let me say, if you haven't seen this video right here, you'll want to start there. So I would pause this video, check this one out, come back to this one, because that video has some of the core things that I talk about every single time. I also had this video on expressions. So when you combine those two, you got a good foundational start. In this video, we're gonna dig in a little bit more. I'm gonna give you a couple key posing ideas, a couple key tactics so that you can really feel confident showing up in front of the camera because that is what it's all about. You feeling confident in your body, you being able to show up and shine with all your amazing sparkatality you have to offer. First off, a quick disclaimer. I am not somebody who's free of body image issues. In fact, one of my first memories was being fitted for a baton costume around the age of five and being told not to suck in, meaning that I shouldn't try to be thinner than I was, which of course means that as a kid, as a five-year-old, I thought I was too big, all this stuff. I have dealt with a lot of body dysmorphia, just a lot of issues with my physicality. And I want you to know, I am, being really vulnerable and showing up this way because right now I'm heavier than I normally am and I'm personally struggling a lot with that. But I so appreciate the people who are showing up, who love their bodies, who are totally fat positive, curve positive, doing all the things. And that's what I deeply, deeply aspire to be. So I'm showing up now imperfectly, not quite there, still dealing with a lot of my internal struggles, but wanting to give you the tools so that you can feel confident in the same way. I also want to say most of the time when I'm photographing more femme people, I get these similar critiques. It's really about how can I look leaner? How can I emphasize my curves? How can I get rid of my double chin? How can I make my arms look slimmer? Just a lot of key repetition and things. That doesn't mean that you should always want those things. In fact, there are some people that I photograph that are on the leaner side and they want to be able to emphasize things. They want to be able to look bigger. They want to be able to look more curvaceous. So I want you to know that just because I'm showing you what the majority of people have asked me for, that doesn't mean you should at all feel obligated to look that way or to try to achieve things that aren't interesting to you. I just wanna help with the people who have asked me the most because in my experience, if you are on the curvier side, you tend to really disappear from photos. In fact, one of my best friends, Kellyanna, just posted this amazing Instagram post comparing a picture of her before and now that she has a health regime and really talking about how she used to hide. And this was, we used to work together all the time, right? So she had a photographer who was there all the time who could make pictures of her all the time, but opted not to. And I totally understand that because your body should be a reflection of you in the way that you feel the best. And we should really not give a about what you look like externally. But we do live in a society with a lot of brainwashing and it's a lot of unpacking that we all each need to do. So yes, ideally love yourself exactly how you are, show up, bang it out, be a boss babe, all those things. And if you need a little help, a few tricks and hacks 
to help you translate in the way you want on camera, that is what I'm here for. Oh, sorry to interrupt, although I have ADHD, so I have a habit of doing that, even though it really pains me to be interrupted. However, I need to ask you a quick favor. If you're digging this video, if you find the information helpful, will you please comment and like, and even better yet, if you're feeling super generous, share. Those three things really help support me and my channel, get my videos seen, and I read through every comment, and I just wanna thank you in advance for your generosity because it is amazing. The first thing we need to talk about is how close or far away we are from the camera. Normally what people do is they'll get in position and they'll naturally have a little bit of lean back because that's usually how we stand. And if you notice when I'm leaning back like this, all of a sudden my head looks really small and compared to the rest of my body. Now the trick, even though it feels a little awkward at first, is to tilt the other way. And once I do that, you can see the size of my head changes dramatically. And that's because the lenses in our cameras really magnify and can really distort things, especially the wider the angle of the lens is, which most iPhones and things like that are going to be that way. So what I want to do is give myself a little bit of a lean forward. And if you look at kind of the way I'm doing it is I'm rocking just a little bit this way. And it mostly thinking about with my upper torso because I'm gonna give you stuff to do with your bottom parts. <laughs> We're gonna start off from my last video, which gives you a lot of core principles that I use all the time with everyone. Just to refresh, the core thing that we're always going to do is pull up through the base of the spine and create elongation. I'm gonna come in a little bit closer for this first core concept. Now, I like to think of this as the turtle. If you think about turtles pushing their heads out of their shell, it's the same motion that we're doing. And the reason we do that is to create a shadow right here because typically we sit with our heads really far back into our necks. That's the relaxed kind of position. And that kind of tuck, as we know, really isn't all that flattering. So what we wanna do is create space first through here. And that's why I say pull up through the base of the spine, drop the shoulders. And then we have, you should feel this little bit of tightness here through the clavicle because I'm creating space through here really lifting up. Then what we wanna do is push the main plane of our face forward and thinking like a turtle. If I did it really crazily, it would be like this, right? like really, really far, feeling all this stretch through here. We're not gonna do it that much, because that's cray. But what we are going to do is push it, so first we're gonna pull up, create that tension, then push forward just a little bit. And what you can see is if you look down here on my lower neck, what it's doing is it's reducing the width through here, and it's also creating a shadow pocket here. The next bonus little thing that we can do is after we pulled long in through here, we push forward just a touch, is we can tilt the chin down just a little bit. So you can see we're seeing more of my under situation here. And by just tilting down just a touch, we're creating that deeper shadow. There are two enhancers to this that you can do depending on what your goals are. A lot of times people who are a little leaning a little bit more to the masculine side, so masculine of center, having a little more androgyny, all that kind of jazz, what they'll do is they'll clench their jaw. And by pushing your back, back teeth together, you're creating a little definition here. So that's one. The next kind of bonus tip that we can do, put in like the meat of your tongue in the roof of your mouth. So I'll show you relax and then tongue at the roof of my mouth. Now this is something if you're really nervous about that under air and you wanna do that, most of the time we're not gonna be photographed from that side profile scenario. So I don't recommend doing that as much because it can really change the energy in your face. And the goal is to leverage these so that we can look natural and they can look effortless, right? So you get it kind of ingrained in your body, use these tools, but a really great picture is when through your body language and your expression, you look like you're inhabiting your full confidence and you're feeling great about yourself. Now that we understand what's gonna go on up here, we need to really dial in the body. So let's back it on up and let's talk about where we're at. If you watch my other video, I talk a lot about width because the way that our width is experienced is going to determine what the curves of our body look like. So if you're somebody who's a little bit thicker 
then you want to be able to control how your curves are operating. And there are some angles that those curves are glorious that we want to emphasize. And there are other angles that most of the people I talk to want to de-emphasize. And a lot of that has to do with social programming, evolutionary psychology, like lots and lots of things. But one of the things that we look for is the waist to hip ratio. And what studies have found is that it doesn't really matter how big or small you are. If that ratio is a smaller waist to bigger hips, that's considered really beautiful. Now, there are lots of issues we can take with this. I don't think you need to have a small waist or a small lower waist in order to be really attractive. But this is the feedback that I get from people is they want to be able to emphasize the difference, right? So they want their waist to be smaller, their hips to look larger. This is one of the first things we need to think about is how our clothing is cutting us up. So I wore this because this feels good to me. It feels comfs. But if you'll notice what's happening with our eyes, we are always going to go for the place of the most contrast. So my legs are dark, my top is lighter, which means I'm being cut right here. I'm being cut at virtually very close to my widest point. And because this is baggier, it's really hiding that difference between my waist and my hips. Those factors together mean I'm going to be experienced with more width. I'm going to come across larger on camera. If I want to change that, I want to think about where I'm being divvied up, so to speak. One thing that we do a lot is we will create more of a cropped version. Even if we still see the bagginess, right, of this shirt, the fact that it happens where I'm kind of supposed to flare out at my bust still gives us this wider, smaller, wider ratio. The other thing that you can do if you can't like hack a crop, which I wouldn't do in this, is to create a little more tightness around your body. And this is why you're seeing so many high-waisted options. Higher waist is a more flattering way to break us up. So a lot of times what we'll do is just go around back Oh my gosh, the one time I don't have a hair tie. Literally the one time. Oh, all right, I'll be back. Take a hair tie, wrap it around, and then depending on where this is hitting us, you can kind of tuck this up here. It makes it so that our shape isn't quite as boxy. Depending on where I put my hands, you really experience my width differently. And this is a hack that's really important if you want to change really the way that you're showing up on camera is that if you look at where I really go to right here, it's about this, this thickness right now. If I put my hands in a little bit, all of a sudden, visually, I look like my waist is going in more there. Similarly with my hips, I can change how wide my hips look based on where I put my hands. This is a great, great trick in really manipulating how your body is experienced. So let's now dig into some poses, what you can actually do in combining a lot of these together. So I'm actually gonna take this off so you can just see all the outlines. I look like a cat burglar right now. I'm gonna steal your belongings, where's your jewelry? So first things first, what we wanna do is put our weight on our back hip. So for me, I love just my left leg is the one I feel the most stable on. So I'm gonna turn my foot out 45 degrees. So it's facing this diagonal. Then I'm gonna take my other foot and put it in front. So it's facing right toward the camera. What you'll notice is I went from here, where it's my maximum width, to coming on the diagonal where that width is a little bit less. Then I'm gonna put my weight on that back hip. And you notice as I do that, this knee comes in and creates a little bit of a bend. This is where we start to get that snake-like contrapposto, really ideal form. Okay, this is a little tangential, but I think this is really gonna help in really understanding how to pose. What our eyes are constantly looking for are contrasts. When we see contrast, that's really how we know where shapes begin, where shapes end. And with curves, for example, we experience a curve by knowing where it ends. If it doesn't end, it's a circle. But curves have an ebb and a flow to them, right? What we really wanna do is help emphasize our curves. So that means that we're, we're showing where they start and showing where they end, and then having the curve in between. So what we're doing with our legs at the bottom here is creating a beginning to that curve. So you see it's thinner through here, and then through my hips, we can see it's curving. And then in my waist, what I'm gonna do to cheat it going in a little bit more than it does is using my hands. Now this is a really great technique, especially if you use your ballet hands, which you think is like 
you know, they're soft and fluttery, these are your ballet hands, is bringing them right into here. Now you can see the contrast between what I'm wearing in my hand makes it so that it appears that I'm coming in here. Now the truth is I'm not really coming in all that much right there. But what I can do is fake it with my hand. I can also turn my hand this way and all of a sudden I'm telling you with that contrast where my curve is, even though it's not 100% accurate. But if we look at my second hand, and this is a mistake I see people do a lot, is they'll bring their second hand in. Then, because we're not seeing that contrast, we're gonna experience that as the entire width there. Whereas, if we create some negative space, then we can see where my waist ends and where my arm begins. Well, this is one pose that I love a lot. So we come here with the ballet hand, and then with this one, we can pin it back. So what I'm doing with my elbows, I'm basically doing, it's kind of like the Angelina Jolie elbow where you roll your elbow back and it makes it so that your thumb is facing forward. And so your arm is kind of curved right here. If you look at all of the older images of her, I don't know if she still does that, but I just used to love it because you're creating these shapes here. Instead of your arms coming around and out, you're creating this shape that's guiding you visibly through there. So we come back to here, we're pulling up to the base of the spine, dropping the shoulders, we're bringing our ballet hand here. With this one, you have a couple options. You can actually roll the shoulder forward, and as long as there's negative space here and we see where we end, that's a great option. Or my favorite is you roll the shoulder back. And when you roll the shoulder back, see how my little bend in the elbow is creating the inner part to my curve. And especially if I cheat a little bit more, then we have my bust line and then coming out to here. This is a great pose, but obviously it looks very staged, right? So this is something like, oh my gosh, when I used to go to galas and you'd be in a fancy dress, this would be something I would just hit, look really beautiful, feel really confident. The thing I add to it is a slight lean forward, pulling up through the spine, dropping the shoulders, pushing the chin forward and down just a touch. Boom! The other core principle is asymmetry. And this is something that you'll see when you're really analyzing poses in fashion magazines, is that there's this combination of triangles and asymmetry and it creates a really beautiful dynamicism, dynamicism, dynamism, wow. It creates a really beautiful dynamism and creates those dynamic like moments that you feel like, yeah, that's really cool. So what we're talking about asymmetry is something like this. So you see my body is naturally doing it, right? Where we're standing up, creating our strength through, in my case, my right leg. So this is where my weight is going. I'm popping this foot out and then I'm cheating with my shoulders and I can even bring this one in, right? This is like actually like I think a fitness influencer kind of pose that you see a lot happening. And the reason it's working is because if you look at the line of my shoulders, the line of my hips, they're going at different angles. And that kind of combination with this triangle here is super flattering and really engaging. So in order to hit this pose, you're gonna pull up through one of your legs. You're gonna pull up through your standing leg and really drive your energy through there. You're gonna pop your non-dominant leg and come up onto the ball of your foot. So if you see back here, I'm <laughs> my sexy chicka boots that I'm on the ball of my foot. And then what you're going to do is pull your hips up and slightly back. So if you see, this is me resting with my hips here. I'm gonna pull them up and slightly back. And then I'm pulling up through the base of the spine, dropping the shoulders, and even just here works, but when you add that asymmetry, it makes it look so much better. And with this, you can feel like my hand just automatically wants to go here. But it's that asymmetry that gives it that cool vibe. Now watch it though, because if you go asymmetry the other way, it looks awkward, right? It looks awkward because there's a, there's a natural way to be asymmetrical that really is in line with what our bodies tend to do, that kind of counterbalancing. So if I'm creating this tilt in through my hips, the crunch that's going to happen is usually on my standing leg side. And you create a little bit of there, roll the shoulder back, then you have a beautiful pose for you there. Another thing to know is when you're doing this triangle arm, you wanna always keep your ballet hands and you don't want to pin it back. I see people pinning it back too far and then you get this kind of injured chicken look. You want to really allow for that space there. And then when you don't know what to do with your other arm, you just float it down. Boom! One other thing that every time I see it, I'm like, ooh, 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 don't do it unless you're a bodybuilder. It's not gonna look good, is the following. It's called the counter 
twist. You'll notice that every time I'm doing a pose, if my energy is diagonal, it's going to stay diagonal. If my energy is more squared, it's going to stay squared. What you're not seeing is a counter twist where my bottom is separated from my top. And a good example of this is when your hips are turned to a diagonal and then you rotate like this. You see this happen a lot in bodybuilding, right? They do that kind of like <gasps> pose thing. And the reason they do that is because it's creating width. It's creating kind of a phenomenon of if you're wringing out a washcloth, right? That it's creating a tiny waist and a big V up top. Now this is totally great if you want to maximize your width up top and you want to look broader up here. Creating a twist is a great way to do it. However, most of the time I've been making images and I've been hearing feedback from people and what they want to have help with in order to look what they think is their best in photos is they want to minimize the width up here right? They don't want to look bulky. They want to look more slim. When you're creating that twist, you're entering maximum width territory. Anytime you're square to the camera and you experience that width, that's going to be the widest you can look. However, if that's what you're going for, it's a good way to achieve it. Instead of doing a counter twist, what I want you to think about is not going too far on your axes. And I see this happen a lot where people will turn to the side, and then because they're trying to be as slim as possible and then they'll turn this way and if you look a few things happen one you see all of this here you see usually the abdominal wall it's hard to really tighten here because of the twist so the abdominal wall looks thicker and then generally this arm adds to that thickness there it also really looks not at all natural. Therefore, what we want to do is make sure that we're staying on an axis of about 45 degrees. So if we see 45 degrees this way, center, 45 degrees this way. This way we are having a dynamic pose, but we're not going so far that we have to crank with an owl and rotate here. The last thing I want to impart when it comes to posing is actually that I don't think of it as posing. I think of it more as body language because the way you're gonna look best in a photograph is when it feels like you are just inhabiting your full self and your full confidence and can be present in the moment. The other thing I'm just gonna throw in really quickly, if we are turned to the side, this is from the other video, so make sure that you watch it because it goes in a lot more depth. But when we're talking about our abdominal wall, which mine is admittedly a little more voluptuous since COVID started, the thing that you want to know is if you are nervous about it, you don't want to suck in because what happens when you suck in is all of a sudden I get all of this tension up here and I get out of breath and I'm not going to look comfortable and comfortable and relaxed is like the thing that we want. So instead what you're going to do is pretend like somebody punched you. So you're going to crunch your abs and then pull up. So you lift the rib cage by doing the pull up through the spine, drop the shoulders, and then it's going to be experienced and it's leanest as it can, Ugh, which you can't hold for very long. <laughs> so when you see the best poses, and I think really when we come to poses, some of the masters in photography are people like Annie Leibovitz. I'm pretty good myself, but you see people who can really direct others in what to do. This type of posing I like to call the relaxed royal. So when we think about this type of posing, it's that kind of regal in charge of myself, but also, I'm confident enough to kind of relax into it. It reminds me of dance. I danced for a long time. And what they say, what happens is you do all this training in body language to work. It becomes second nature to you. And if you think about the royal family, which low key, maybe high key, I'm super obsessed since watching The Crown. I'd never seen The Crown. Just watched season four, out of the blue. Amazing. Watched the Princess Diana documentary in her own words. And now I'm obsessed with all things royal, no matter what dynasty, whatever. So if you have any recommendations, actually let me know because I'm on a tangent. That's one of the things about my ADHD brain. When it gets locked on, it's locked in. And one of the things that you think about is imagine yourself as a royal, right? You're a prince, a princess, a duke, duchess, whatever the situation is. You are going to have years upon years upon years of training in how to stand. So it's going to become natural to you, right? So you're gonna pull up through the base of the spine, drop the shoulders, and this is just how you're going to move through the world. You're gonna have elongation through your neck, 
and you're going to be looking like this, never looking too downward, all those sorts of things. So the thing is this, when you're then relaxed, it's not going to be relaxed like somebody who's never had that training, right? Because they're gonna be all crunched up and all that jazz. When you're a relaxed royal, you're gonna still have that basis of that carriage, but then there'll just be little moments where you're, little micro moments in your body language where you're more relaxed. This is what we want. And let me show you some good examples. So for example, let's just say there's a chair around. One thing that you'll see is again, I'm using that same idea of contrapposto. I'm twisting a little bit. I'm putting my weight in my back foot. I'm bringing my other foot in. I'm pulling up to the space of the spine. And then I'm allowing my arm to just relax over to the side. And it's this combination of what my hands are doing and what my arms are doing that replies this kind of relaxed vibe, right? Now, if I were to truly be relaxed and slumped the way I would, it, it's crunching everything up. You're not really seeing the full curvaceous reality of my body. But when I pull up through this base of the spine, drop the shoulders, and then kind of crunch into it a little bit, then you get that relaxed royal. So there are a few ways to do this. Like we could do it on the back here, right? I'm creating that asymmetry. I'm not afraid to take up space and I'm allowing parts of my body to be a bit more relaxed. I wanna show you what it looks like sitting because this is the mistake that most people make is that when they sit, they're sitting too far back in a chair and it doesn't look good. What we end up doing, and I'm sorry if this is a little crotch tacular, but what we end up doing is we end up, because I'm leaning back a little bit, the biggest part of the frame is all of this stuff under here. So what you want to do on a seat is you want to slide to the very tip of it and rock your hips back. Now, if we combine that with rotating a little bit to the side, creating that asymmetry, and then pulling up to the base of the spine, dropping the shoulders and having that little lean forward. Boom! And then tightening that abdominal wall. The other thing that we can do is really, it involves having different levels. And this is that kind of look that you see from Annie Leibovitz a lot, is you'll see the bottom leg is turned. So you're seeing the side of this leg. The second leg is outstretched. You'll see that there's just this kind of lean into it. And this is the kind of relaxed royal vibes. I'm still creating negative space. I'm leaning forward just a touch. I'm using that negative space to really determine where my curves are so you can really see that. And I'm not afraid to take up space. That's sort of the key ingredient is creating those triangles, taking up space and creating this kind of contrapposto. So that's it for this video. Although I would be happy to make more videos. So just let me know if there's something you specifically wanna know because I'm happy to create more content around this if you all like it. So leave a like so I know that you're interested in this type of content. And if you like videos like these, all about how to look good, feel confident on camera, about business, ADHD, all the kind of things, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell and turn it to all notifications. That way you're not relying on YouTube to decide what videos you wanna see you get the option to see all of my videos when they come out. And if you made it to this point of the video, leave me a little emoji so that I know because I extra think you're amazing and wonderful because the average view duration is like two minutes on videos. And so it means a lot to me that you got to the end. Last thing I just wanna remind you is that we live in a culture that is designed to make you feel like you need things to make you feel like you are not good enough, to make you feel like you should lose weight, that you should try this diet, that you need these supplements, whatever the case may be, and that is to make other people money. The truth is, you are awesome, and you don't need any of that stuff. You are beautiful, powerful, amazing, and you deserve to show up in pictures and in video with your full, beautiful self, okay? I'm giving you these tips, to help you shine in the way you want, but I just want you to know, this is about you and your confidence. This isn't about needing to be a certain way for other people, because if other people are judging you, that says a lot about them. Nobody in a good place is gonna be criticizing other people for living their best life, okay? So take a deep breath, own all of your amazingness, and I will see you in another video next week. Bye.